Hi, this is Dave from the Not So Into Chinese Secret Show and DQ Studios, and today we're going to take a look at the Nikon Z or Z series of cameras. Right now, you're looking at the Z6, and it's being shot by this camera, the Z7. And I say Z because I'm Canadian, but Z, that's the same thing. Now, both cameras have the identical hardware as well as the menu setup. So, this is going to be applicable for all of the Z series cameras, with the exception that you're going to see a few differences in both the resolution available for still. As well as the frame rates and cropping and things like that for the video. But I should note that right now I am looking at the firmware version 1.02 and 1.00 for the LF. Now, if you get the update which Nikon has already announced, there may be some differences in usability as well as the menu, but until that's released, this is going to be pretty much, you know, 99% of what you need to know. Now, my goals in setting up the camera are to make it the most reliable in exposure as well as in ergonomics and usability to adapt to quickly changing circumstances. As a professional wedding photographer, event photographer, and commercial filmmaker, I need to be able to adapt to my surroundings quickly. And so one thing that I do and is shoot full manual mode all the time. Auto modes can be great, but they do change as the camera sees fit. And I wanna not have the camera make the decisions for me. I wanna make sure that I know what it's focusing on and what it's exposing for and what it's white balancing for. So although some of the auto modes can be great, I use it in full manual mode all the time in both stills mode as well as in video mode. There's no right or wrong to this, but just make a note of that. So if you see something that I do, which is a little bit weird, it may be because I'm not using those auto modes. There's nothing wrong with using the auto modes, but I like to have full control as a control freak. So I use it in full manual mode. Before we get diving into the menus, let's take a look at the button layout and some recommendations as far as the touch screen, because that is one of the newest things about the Nikon. The great thing about the Nikon Z series is that if you're a Nikon user, it's gonna feel very familiar. But one thing that I recommend to change right away is to turn off the default of being able to shoot by touching the screen. <laughs> now, um, when I first used this camera, I had no idea what was going on because the focus point was moving around as well as it was taking pictures without me seemingly take pictures. And it's because of this little icon here at the left side top of the screen. And what that does, if you cycle through it all, it turns the touch autofocus from on to touch and the shutter autofocus off to this mode, touch shutter autofocus on, which means whenever or wherever you touch the screen, it'll not only try to focus there, but it'll take a picture at that time as well after it locks focus. And this was crazy to me because when I hold a camera, especially with the small prime lenses, I'll actually hold and get, create a platform for my camera. And often my thumb will actually rest up here. I can't really cradle it that way because I've got this on a tripod. But with my thumb touching, it would, it would, it's so sensitive, even without me literally touching, or I can't even feel it touching, the touchscreen is so sensitive, which is actually a good thing, that it actually took pictures without me wanting to take pictures. And then my focus point moved, and that was so annoying because I had to recenter or replace my focus point with my joysticks. And uh, yeah, because I'm just not used to having that touchscreen control. So that's my first recommendation. If you find yourself accidentally touching the touch screen like I did, then turn that off and you'll be good to go. Now that we've got our touch screen set up the way I like, I'm gonna switch over and customize the hardware buttons on the camera. And what's really cool is that we can customize the buttons to act one way for still shooting, and we can set the custom buttons up a different way when we're shooting video. And I love this because they're two very different formats with different options that are useful to you depending on what you're shooting. To switch from stills to video mode, we just toggle this one switch and the little camera icon here is for stills and we toggle it to the little movie camera to switch it to movie mode. Before we dive into customizing the menu, I should mention that I, as a photographer and videographer, shoot fully manual all the time. I don't use auto white balance, I don't use auto ISO, and I don't use the A, S, or P modes, so I'm stuck at the M mode all the time. Just because it gives me the most reliability and it also gives me the most control over how I want my images to turn out. If you shoot in the auto modes, that's totally perfectly fine, but you might wanna just tweak some of these different options depending on how you shoot. To get into the menu system, we just hit the menu button and you can navigate two different ways. One, you can use the rocker switch and the OK button. I can press right to get into this menu and press OK to select that. And then to go back, I can typically use my left button on my rocker, but sometimes it doesn't work. Like in this particular menu item, for example, if I go left, it just wraps around to the last item 
instead of giving me back, letting me go back one menu item. So to go back one menu item, we have to use the touch screen and press that upper right corner button. So there's two different ways. Of course, to get out of menu, we can just hit menu until we get out of here. Or we, while we're in the menu, we can press halfway in our shutter button and it gets us into shoot mode right away. Let's hit menu and to change the hardware buttons, we're gonna go into the little right tab here, which is where we custom settings menu, okay? Now from here, we're gonna go to the F, which is the controls, and this controls changes it for the still shooting. Later on, we're gonna go into the movies and change all the hardware controls for movie shooting. But first, let's go to F and go to F2. Now here, our F1 button here, I love this menu system, and Sony should take a note from Nikon because this is way easier to use than the Sony menus, but the F1 button is the button right next to the lens, and it's really easy to reach with your third finger when you're gripping the camera here. What I do is I set that to choose whether I want to disable or enable the flash. When I press and hold this button in, even when I'm shooting, I can turn off my flash and then turn on my flash by releasing it. And why I do this, anybody who knows our photography knows that we like to light things up a lot. And so it gives me more options to quickly shoot ambient light and then switch to flash photography and then switch back to ambient light while pressing and holding and releasing that button. I love it. The second button that we can customize is the function two button. And that's just relocated lower on the front. It's kind of reachable with your fourth finger. If you've got long fingers, I don't, but it also, cradle my camera with the lens and that my index finger on my left hand is perfectly situated to press this button. And what I have a program for is the preview. And so because we've got an electronic viewfinder, which is phenomenal, it allows us to see the image as it will be shot. So it's very easy to quickly just press that and see if that's what I want and then let go and then take that shot. Or you can actually press and hold and take the shot at the same time, which is really, really nice. The next button that we can program is the autofocus on. What I do with this one is literally put it autofocus on. Later on, we'll also see that I dissociate the autofocus from the shutter halfway press. So when this is in autofocus continuous mode, it allows me to focus only when my back thumb is going to be pressed onto this button. It probably needs its own video for back button focus and why that's so valuable because it gives you pretty much autofocus single continuous control at your whim and allows you to focus and recompose really easily. But um, maybe we'll need to do another video on that. The next one that we can program is going to be the actual joystick on your thumb here. And this is for the left, right, up, down. And I keep this to be the focus point selector. The next button that we can customize is going to be what the joystick does when you press it in. For still shooting, I have this set so that it resets it to the center focus point. The next button that we can customize is the movie record button. And that's at the top of the camera, right behind and to the left of the shutter button. When I'm shooting stills, I don't need to record video at a whim because it's just a different mindset for me. And so I don't need that. So I repurpose that to be my DX crop factor. So in use, what this allows me to do is press and hold that movie record and then quickly get a little more reach with my lens if I go to DX mode. And then I can quickly go back to full frame mode. And this is so awesome because because even with a limited number of lenses, I can get a little bit more reach in my stills photography. So a 50 becomes approximately 85. And so really great option to have there. The next option that we can customize is the lens function button. And not all lenses have this button, but if they do, I like to choose to use the autofocus on for it. And that just gives me an option for my left hand to control the focus and the last option is going to be the lens control ring. And this is gonna be the default of uh, controlling my focus. Now that we've finished setting up the hardware for our still shooting, let's go back and set up our video mode shooting. So to go and customize the buttons for videos, we're gonna go into G, which is the movies, and then go to G2, custom control assignment. There's a fewer options here, which is a little bit sad, but you know, it's okay. The first button is the function one button. In the stills mode, we made this our flash kill or flash allow button, right? But because we don't need flashes in video mode, I choose to make this our white balance selector. So I can really quickly change the white balance. And this is really nice because when we're shooting videos, you do wanna make sure your white balance is set because unlike raw in stills mode, we don't have as much lenience in fixing the color in post-production. 
The next button is the function two button. And this one allows me to choose the focus area that I'm using for video mode. And often I'm gonna use the full mode, but sometimes I wanna use a more of a pinpoint control, depending on what I'm shooting in video mode. Moving on to the autofocus on button. What I program this one to do is lock the autofocus. So it's kind of the opposite of the stills mode that I have this pressed on only when I want to focus. I press this when I don't want the camera to focus. And the reason why I do this, let's take a look at how this works in the real world. If I have this often on the autofocus full frame mode, which I do, then if I had something that passed through the frame, it would try to focus on that, which is kind of a problem, right? So if I know that something's gonna be coming in through the frame, I can actually press and hold this to lock the focus so it doesn't try to autofocus on this. And then as something passes through, I can let go and let it continue to autofocus for me. So that's a really nice way to use this camera. The next option we can customize is the sub selector center button. And for that, I choose to have that reset the focus point to the center. In the real world, it just allows me to remember better because the joystick and the center button have the same function in both the movie mode and the stills mode. The next button that we can customize is the shutter button. And I do choose to make this take photos while I'm shooting video so I can actually just quickly get a picture if I want. And the last thing, is going to be the lens control ring, and we do leave this to focus. Now that we've got the hardware set up, let's look at another item that is very useful to us, and that is what we call the eye menu. Now the eye menu, very similar to Sony's quick menu, allows us to quickly access some functions that we may need, and there, you can customize this for both the video mode and the stills mode separately, which I love. To do this, let's hit the menu button, go into our controls custom setting menu. And this time we're going to F and then F1, customize I menu. And this is gonna let us customize the I menu for stills. So in stills mode, I like to set my top left to set picture control. And I'll often switch this if I'm shooting JPEG for personal use to neutral or to standard or monochrome if I wanna shoot black and white only. Below that, I have it set to white balance. If you're shooting JPEG, this actually matters, but if I'm shooting raw, I usually set this and forget it and don't worry about it too much because I can always choose that in post in Lightroom. The next two options are gonna be the quality, which is gonna be if you wanna shoot raw or JPEG or both, and then the size, what kind of resolution you wanna shoot at. After that, we can choose to silent photography. As we'll note in a review, this isn't always the best option. Although I always wanna shoot silently if I can, this isn't always the best option because especially with indoor lighting, with, with the new LED lights that are available, I often find this really weird pattern of dark and light lines across the frame. And so I don't often shoot with silent photography unless I must, but outdoors is actually a great option a lot of the times. Below that, I can also choose my image area. And after that, I have my vibration reduction, which I typically leave on. I actually find it very great for still shooting. And below that, I do have this custom control assignment, and that allows me to change my hardware buttons very quickly. If the shooting scenario changes and I want to access to another option, I can quickly change that. After that, I have the release mode. And so that's gonna be the same as this one went down here. And below that, we apply the settings to live view. This is a little bit different than the preview button, but kind of similar. This will always keep your live view the same as what you're going to shoot. I kind of like this sometimes in good light, but if you're struggling to see the image and you have it stopped down to like five, six, so you're not letting as much light onto the sensor, I find autofocus struggles a lot if you turn this mode on. So depending on your lighting situation and your shooting scenario, this may be useful to you. After that, I have the autofocus area mode, which I often just choose to have the center focus point because I can focus and recompose at will and I know exactly where it's gonna be and then what kind of focus mode that I want. And as we'll notice, I pretty much keep this to autofocus continuous mode. So that's the customized eye menu for stills. Now let's customize it for movies. And similarly, we're gonna go to the G and go into the customized eye menu, G1. It's a little bit different here, a little bit similar. So the first one is gonna be the set picture control. And one thing that I like out of the camera is Nikon's colors. They're beautiful for video. And so the SD mode as well as the neutral mode are just gorgeous. I do have my white balance as well set down there. You'll notice it's also my third finger, but if I forget or if I wanna set it in the menus, I can always do that here. The next one is going to be my 
quality, which is going to allow me to go high or normal for the video mode, as well as my resolution and frame rate. It's all chosen here. Below that, it gives me the ability to change my microphone input volume. And after that, I've got the ability to quickly change from my DX crop to my full frame crop. And I should know in 120 frames per second, I believe this crops in the DX mandatorily. So you don't always get this option, which is kind of sad. Below that, we have the noise, wind noise reduction, and that's only going to be when you're using the inbuilt mics. But bonus, I do really like how the built-in mics sound, and I often use them for B-roll or just ambient noise, which I really like. After that, a couple of options that I really like for video use is going to be peaking, and what that does is outline those objects that are in focus. All right, and below that, we've got the headphone volume. Right now, on my Z7 that I'm shooting with, I am monitoring my microphone, which is an external microphone, with my headphones. And so that's nice to be able to control the volume. After that, we've got the highlight display, and that's like the zebras. And so anything that is showing zebras in your frame will be overexposed. But I should also note that this doesn't work. If you have peaking on, you can't see the highlights, which is kind of silly in some modes. After that, vibration reduction. I kind of really like the vibration reduction on the video mode. So far, I've been using it with the vibration mode on and haven't turned it off. After that, I do have the autofocus area mode um, as well as the focus mode. And this is going to change depending on the lighting scenario, environment, and what I want to focus on for video modes much more than it will in stills. Okay, that's it for customizing our eye menu for video. Let's take a look at the rest of the menu options. Now, the playback options I'm not going to go into because they're not very useful for the reliability of the shooting because that's just for playback. But so let's start with the camera. Now at the camera tab here, we'll just go down the list and stop when there's something useful for us to change. The choose image area, we've already made that so our movie record button can quickly change that. The image quality, image size can also be changed quickly via the eye menu. The ISO sensitivity, I can change by pressing and hold the ISO and turning this knob, the back control button dial, and so that's not really necessary either. White balance, set control, manage by control, color space. Active D-Light, now I do choose to make this normal. Now, long exposure, noise reduction, I don't do a lot of long exposure, but you may want to play with this if you do. Vignette control is on normal, diffraction compensation is on, auto distortion control is on, flicker reduction is on. Metering, I don't really care because I shoot all manual. Now, focus flash mode, I choose rear curtain sync. So if you have something moving like a car, it won't flash the car and then give it a trail of the motion in front of it. You want the trail of motion and then flashing the car at the end so that the, the trails of the motion are behind the car. That's why I choose this to be rear curtain sync of the flash. Besides that, the focus mode, I always keep it on autofocus continuous for photo shooting. And as we talked about with the autofocus on button, this allows me to focus track anything that's on the active focus point and then release it when, I want it, when it stops, I can stop and then I can press the shutter to independently take the picture, which is really nice. Autofocus area mode, I choose to make this the single point autofocus. And so I control it with my joystick and I can press in on the joystick to change it back to the center focus point, which is nice. And after this, vibration reduction, we leave that on. I don't really use the auto bracketing or multiple exposures. The interval time shooting is awesome, but I don't need it here. Uh, I will link to a review of a slider which has a cable that you can actually do very easy time lapses and it'll control the camera for you, amazing. Focus shift shooting, don't use it. Sound photography, we've got that on the menu system as well. Moving on to the movie shooting menu. A lot of these we've already customized into our eye menu or onto the hardware buttons. So let's just skip down to anything that we don't have. Movie file type, you can just choose what file type. If you're Windows, you probably want MP4. And if you're Mac like me, I just choose .move. And so whatever works for you. And besides that, a lot of these options, again, I'm skipping over because we have control over this in our eye menu or in our hardware buttons. I do have that active delighting set to normal. High ISO noise reduction set to normal, vignette control set to normal, diffraction compensation set to on, auto distortion control on, and flicker reduction to auto. Let's jump down into focus mode. Now in the movie shooting menu, 
I do have the autofocus mode set to full-time autofocus. And why I do that is because as we noted in our hardware setup, I can anytime press my autofocus on to kill autofocus so it doesn't autofocus. And in video mode, unlike stills mode, you want to be able to have something in focus all the time so you can guide the viewer's eye in the video. So the next item is gonna be also very important is the autofocus area. And typically for video mode, I keep this to auto area autofocus. And when you have this in the shooting mode, in the video mode here, you'll notice that you have those four little red corners. And that means it's automatically choosing what to focus on. But it's really easy to override its internal autofocus. You can just click on any point on the LCD and it'll change focus to that. And so the autofocus sometimes is a little bit jarring, at least with this firmware version, but I find it does a pretty good job. And when you wanna leave the focus on there, you can just press and hold, and now it won't change focus on me. Now, if you wanna get back to the full screen and let the camera decide what to focus on, we just hit the minus magnification button, and it goes back to the full screen of autofocus points. Moving on, vibration reduction, I keep this on, and unless you find that you're getting some really weird jitters, then you can keep this on. Electronic vibration reduction, I haven't really played around with this too much, but I typically like to keep things to the optical vibration reduction on the actual stabilized sensor. Microphone sensitivity, I find the auto mode for the built-in mics excellent for B-roll, environmental sounds and such. But if you're gonna use another microphone, external microphone, that's when you wanna control this and that's why it's in my eye menu in movie mode. Attenuator, that's in case you have too much volume on your microphone. If your microphone is too loud, you can always add a little bit more attenuation. Frequent re response on your microphone, I like to leave this to wide. And wind noise, again, we've got these option. This option is on our eye menu. So if you're out in windy conditions, it can try to save your audio, but really it's not gonna be that great. Headphone volume is also on our eye menu. And time code, if you're a pro, then you might want to get time code if you're shooting with other cameras as well that have time code to make your life easier in post. Okay, we're done there. Now that we've done all of our movie shooting, let's go and customize the entire camera, starting with the autofocus. Now this is gonna be for stills, but the autofocus continue priority selection, I leave this to the default of release, okay? But if I switch to autofocus single point and you know your object isn't gonna be moving a lot, this one is set to focus, which is the default. Focus tracking with lock on, this is the default of three, which is pretty okay. And auto area autofocus face detection, I leave on. And that actually works pretty darn good. I've heard with the firmware update, it should be even better with eye track autofocus. Focus points used, all of them. And you can choose all, every other, but I choose all of them. Store points by orientation, I turn on. Autofocus activation. Now, what's really cool about the menu system is that you've got this little question mark. If you don't know what it does, just hit that question mark. Choose which controls can be used to focus the camera. And like I said before, I don't use the shutter button to activate autofocus. And this gives me more control of when the camera chooses to autofocus. So you'll notice that this autofocus activation is set to off, and that is not the default of the camera. Now, Limit autofocus area mode selection. Now, if you don't wanna choose all the different options and you know you're not gonna ever use the wide area single or large, which I never do, you can choose these to select off, but I seldom ever even change these, so whatever works for you. Focus point wrap around. Now, this just means if you get to the edge of the screen and you press one more over on the joystick, it'll go to the other side and just keeps on going forever. I kinda don't like this, so I kinda like to know where I am, and that's why I also press center to recenter my focus point, so I turn this off. Low light autofocus, haven't had enough time to test this feature, but as far as the menu item is con concerned, I have it to on, but it only works on single autofocus, so it's not something that I use often, so probably not applicable for the way I shoot. Built-in autofocus illuminator, I turned to off, because as noted in DP Review's um, test, it doesn't allow a onboard flash like the SB900s to flash its grid. It uses its built-in little green focus assist. And I think that's really annoying. And I actually find the grid also annoying. And so we turn this off always. These are defaults, easy exposure compensation. If you use the auto modes, you may want to turn this on. And 
I don't need to fine tune. Let's go on to C, shutter release button, AE lock. And this one is off because again, I shoot all manual, so it doesn't matter. Aha, the self timers. Now this is where I also change it. Let's increase this one to nine. That way, if you're gonna take selfies with this, put this on a tripod, you get nine different options and half a second between each is actually really good. So there we go, much better selfies. Power off delay, I also change this. Now playback menu, I bump it up to one minute. Menus, I bump up to five minutes. Image review to 10 seconds and standby timer to five minutes. I love this electronic viewfinder, but one thing that I miss is the immediacy of an optical viewfinder. If this standby timer turns on while your camera is down to your side and you pick it up to your eye, it's really jarring to not see anything for literally maybe one second or less. So what I like to do is increase the standby timer so whenever I lift it to my eye, I do have that there, okay? Now I should also know on the side of the optical viewfinder or the electronic viewfinder, we've got the option to change from the um, prioritized viewfinder to automatic day switch to viewfinder only to monitor only. And in shoot mode for stills, I will make this viewfinder only. Moving on the CL mode shooting speed. And so that's gonna be continuous low speed versus continuous high speed. I choose that to be three frames per second. And then we go to D6, limit selectable image area. And if you don't shoot with one to one or 16.9, I never do, um, then you don't need to have those options selected. Apply settings to live view is on. And remember we talked about this, it's in our eye menu because sometimes in dark circumstances, you don't want to see what you're gonna shoot because you're not gonna let as much light onto the sensor. And that means it's gonna have a more difficult time achieving focus. Framing grids, I don't use them. Peaking highlights, I do use them. But let's keep on going here. Moving on to flash sync speeds, I have the 1 200th. We can change that to the auto FP mode for super high speed sync with available Nikon flashes. And let's move on down here. Modeling flash, I turn off. What modeling flash does is kind of annoying to me as a wedding videographer, I don't want to be seen. And it lets you kind of, it just strobes the light really quickly so you can see kind of where the shadows fall. So I actually don't use this. You can customize the OK button here. And let's go take a look at some of the options. I choose to use this to be the reset, the focus point when I'm shooting. And in playback mode, I really am used to Nikon's histograms, so I like to view my histogram. So if I'm playing back something here, I can just press and hold the OK and it shows me the histogram of that image. Customize command dials. And this is where you can actually reverse the rotation and all that stuff. I do choose to turn it on for menu and playback. And what's nice about that is that you can use the front dial to skip a whole bunch of images. So you can choose how many images you want to skip by. Like 10 frames is fine for me, but you can skip by 50 if you shoot a lot of different images too. Now moving on into the movie section in the G customizations, autofocus speed. Now you can play with this and I find that right now the autofocus speed in video mode to be very variable, which I don't like. Sometimes it'll be really fast and sometimes it'll be really slow. And to actually show you this, if I press over here, one, one thousand, two, and that's pretty fast. And I go back to the nearer plant, one, whoops, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five. So that took five seconds to focus this way. I'm going to press that one again. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand. So I don't really know. Their algorithm for video focusing is really flaky. Um, go back here. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand. So that's about eight seconds again. Back here. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000. Huh, that's pretty consistent. And then if I press this one here, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. Ugh, yeah. Anyways, how hard you press seems to make a difference for how fast it focuses too. So if I press hard, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4. Ugh. So uh, the autofocus in video mode is a little bit aggravating to control reliably. Moving on, the autofocus track sensitivity, I leave to the default as well. And because I have the autofocus on in video mode set to stop autofocus tracking, I can kind of control the process. Although I do hope in the latest firmware update that they're gonna release soon, that Nikon improves the video focusing mode quite a bit. Now that we're done with our custom mode, let's go into the setup menus. And from here, 
You can format the memory cord, of course, but some things that I do change besides the time zone is going to be all the way to image comment. An image comment allows you to attach a comment to the image in the metadata. And what I do is I have this set to a different letter and number depending on who shot it and what number of camera it is. So this is D4 for Dave and this is the fourth Nikon that I shoot with. And so in Phone Mechanic I can pull out this image comment and make it so that the file name uses it so I know which camera shot it right away by just looking at the file name, which I really like. Another thing that I do recommend if you made it this far to the menu is changing the copyright information so we choose to put our website on there so they know who took the shot. Now after that, the beep controls I turn off, right? Touch controls I leave on. HDMI, now this gets interesting. If you're a professional user, you can actually choose to get 10-bit output out of this guy, which is awesome, which I don't have anything that can actually do that. So I just haven't changed this. But if you did, ooh, really nice. Unless you're wanting to share images or video right away on your smartphone, I do recommend changing the airplane mode to on. And that will save your battery life because it's not going to always be looking for a signal or broadcasting a signal. This is really important to me and I'm not sure why any manufacturer would make this default to on. But what this means is if there's no card inside the camera that it will not allow you to release the shutter. As a default it does. And what scares me the most is thinking that I'm recording to a card if there is no card in there. As a professional photographer that would not be a good thing. <laughs> I also like the ability to save and load all your settings so you can always go in here and do that and load them up from the card as well and you can reset all your settings if you hate everything I've shared with you but that's all and the usability of the camera is actually really good for stills photography I hope their upcoming firmware update will improve the autofocus accuracy in both stills and video mode that is yet to be seen but hopefully I can test that if Nikon is nice enough to give me these cameras back after the firmware update gets released but hopefully that's useful to you guys cheers God bless and I'll see you guys in the next video